thank you, uh, Commissioner, uh, my usual familiar colleagues. The agreed CRD text is a good step forward on core capital, exposures and supervision. The securitisation provision, now with proportional penalties for due diligence failures, is not perfect, but it is fit for purpose, the purpose to rebuild confidence and repair the securitisation market. Review at the end of the year on the retention percent means we have covered all bases, including international coordination. European problems with securitisation came on the buy side from the US, but fear has dried up our own securitisation and banks have lost the main instrument that enabled them to sell on their loans, <coughs> an important instrument because it freed up capital for further lending and was a major driver for growth. In 2006 to 7, European securitizations totaled 800 billion euros, 526 billion supporting European mortgages, tens of billions each on car purchases, credit card spending and SME loans, yes, including something like 40 billion of German SME loans. These are the very areas where the credit crunch is biting hardest and it's no coincidence because we have to face the fact that bank lending is limited by their capital and they're stuck until either more capital is raised or the loan sold on. So the sooner that we can get Europe's quality controlled securitization working, the better. Now, it may seem that if 5% retention guarantees good behaviour by banks, then 10% would guarantee it more. But the retained portion attracts a capital charge, so it reduces the capital that can be freed up and in turn restricts lending. A 10% hit during times of ongoing capital stress would just hurt borrowers and businesses, not banks. That's why other forums, also having started with higher retention proposals, are tending to settle on 5% too. But ultimately, it will be intelligent supervisory sorry, vigilance that will prevent future new abuses rather than regulation for the old and gone. So on level three committees, we can see that despite the problems and failures in supervision, it is the Parliament that has recognised better than Member States that holes cannot be plugged without resources, and it has followed to demand more resources for those committees. International accounting and audit bodies will also benefit from more diversified neutral funding and the EU can lead off on this, but not indefinitely if other countries do not join in. And I'm pleased to have clarified that. And funding should also be sought from the user side, such as investors. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.